Hi folks, today we're going to talk about optimizing print settings when using new filaments or even setting up your printer for the first time. And the way that you do that is by printing objects at different temperatures and figuring out what settings work best for you. And it turns out there's actually a really good way to test both how well it prints and what the various material properties might be at those varying temperatures. And uh, that's called a heat tower. And so I have one of those here, and this basically changes temperature by five degrees Celsius every 25 layers. And uh, my friend Rocco actually pointed me on to this uh, after having uh, kind of just found out himself, and I figured I'd pass this on to everybody else because I'm learning a lot from this. So it starts with the hottest temperature on the bottom and then go, cools down as it climbs and uh, you get down to you know the nozzle potentially clogging and, and that's where user intervention is required as I understand it. So that's why you go down in temperature as you go up in layers. And just from this PLA one here, and by the way I printed this, uh, I always start my print settings off at 70 degrees Celsius on the bed temp and then every layer it cools down by 2 degrees Celsius until it's 60 degrees Celsius. And I don't use tape or, or glue or anything, I just print directly onto the mirror glass which is uh, hand washed with like Dawn dish soap and water. And so uh, as you can see here on this little bridge, uh, when you have the hotter temperatures you have that, that waviness and, and the sagging and stringiness going on and then clearly there is a point where things sort of become optimized. Now what's really interesting and what I've learned about this is, and I would like to print one with some colder temperatures uh, just to see, but uh, at least compared to the, the finish, it kind of gets better when you get like 195, 190 here. There's actually a, a shade difference that's visible, and I don't know if that shows up on camera between these and these. And of course, because it's being extruded at that cooler temperature, uh, the bridging the gap works out pretty well. But that may not be the optimum setting when you're printing something that has like this triangle edge because one thing I learned is that when you have that cooler material temperature, it cracks uh, and the edges break off easy. So I can break off a couple of strings uh, from these edges at the 195 and 190, but when you get at like the 205 range, the adhesion is much better between uh, each each uh, layer or each time the extruder, extruder comes around to make the next outside edge. And because even though they're thin, they're well adhered, they definitely withstand me, you know, pinching my finger onto it and trying to push it over, whereas I was pretty, uh, it was definitely easier to mull over the edges uh, on these top layers. So that's with PLA. And now I've just finished this flexible material. And this is uh, the elastic stuff that's from GP3D. And this is the very first time I've printed with this. And so I did the same, the same settings that I always do. And I don't know how well it's going to come off the mirror here. Sometimes you can pry things up, but it actually shock typically was the way to go. But uh, since this is elastic, that, that's not working for me. So there's that one. And then I got to do this like with the phone in the other hand. There we go. You got it. Bloop. If you have the CR10, I'm going to put a file for this test in the description uh, and I'll also link to the object on Thingiverse um, so you can get your own and play with your with, play with your print settings. But I'll just grab the file off the SD card that I put in the machine and make that immediately available as well. Um, and that's got the, you know, the PLA settings and, and steps the temperature down. So if you don't have software like Simplify 3D, um, you can still use that file, at least on the CR10, I have the CR10S, um, to be able to, to try that out. And this is the stock firmware and everything, by the way, so um, that should work just fine on other CR10 machines. And um, I'd be curious to know if, if there's a wide variance in these and, and uh, what temperatures work for 
other people. Uh, I learned on this one that you you can have a slightly higher temperature and get better consistency on walls and things and on these on these prints here but you can lower the temperature uh, to better bridge gaps uh, and and print them consistently and the same is sort of true on here although suffice it to say 205 the 205 range seems to perform pretty optimally so I think I'm actually gonna bump my temperature down I typically printed at 210 on PLA uh, so I think I'm going to go down to, to 205, and that's going to be a pretty good balance between structural integrity on corners and uh, being able to, to bridge gaps. Typically, I don't, at least for now, have these larger distances. But now I'm well aware that if I do, I can go down to 200 or maybe even 195, and at the sacrifice of uh, a little bit of structural integrity in the corners, I can hit those those larger distances. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick tip. Uh, the machine's running great. I'm going to get some bracing here at the top um, and then kind of come back and down because if I can keep this from moving and bouncing around, I'm pretty sure I can do a lot higher accuracy on high-speed prints. Just bolting this thing uh, to this filing cabinet made a significant difference in that regard. And I think I'd like to try and get just a little more out of it. I'm curious how much of a difference that makes. So look for that in a future video and uh, more creations and stuff to come. So stay tuned. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you know somebody that has a 3D printer, show them this, please, because this, this really makes a difference in regards to the quality of prints and optimizing things. So till next time, have a good one.